Hey everyone, welcome to CRVC TV. We are on episode 6 now. Today we are talking about caravan washing machines. Um, big topic for the women. Um, if you don't already know, I've got two little ones. I've got a four year old and a two year old. So when we go camping, it's kind of a must have for us. Um, I don't like sitting around the washing machine bays at the caravan parks with my little ones. It just becomes a nightmare. Um, last week we spoke about caravan air conditioning. So we've got quite a few questions that came through after the session last week. So I'm going to swip round to Greg and we'll go through those while you guys come on board and ask some questions about washing machines. Thanks guys. Welcome back all. Hope everyone had a great week. Okay. So we had Debbie from last week. Um, I've read recently that if you run an aircon on dry, it cools more than it does on cool. I haven't tried it yet, but what are your thoughts? Our aircon doesn't seem to get very cold. Okay. Firstly, um, the dry cycle on your air conditioner is a dehumidifying cycle. So it's not actually a conditioning or cooling cycle. Um, it's designed to dry the air in the van. So when you get those really rainy days and everything feels damp inside the van, that function is to dry the air in the van again to make everything feel drier so in technicality it won't cool the air better than your cooling cycle or your conditioning cycle on the aircon as I said it's purely there just to dry the air um, for the best effect in cooling you should run your air conditioner on the refrigeration cycle or the cool cycle um, if your aircon is not running efficiently on that cycle, it would pay to contact um, a specialist and have a look at the machine. Make sure your filters are really clean um, and that it's operating at its full potential. Um, those that are finding that it's running better on the drying cycle and the cooling cycle should be telling you there's something wrong with your air conditioning system or your filters are very dirty and need a good clean. Yes, I do agree with the filters. Um, the girls in the office will agree. We cleaned out our filters the other day and the next day they had cardigans. So it makes a big, big impact. Thanks for that one, Debbie. Um, we also had Jason. Can I just ask why caravan manufacturers plate their vans without extras, i.e. full gas bottles, water tanks that may tip over your weight? Okay, look, it's a really, really uh, good question. Um, in our belief, no van should have their tear weights um, recorded without those critical items on board, your water tanks, your spare wheels, your gas bottles. It's not really a caravan without those items. Um, you may find the manufacturers uh, used to record without that equipment because of the tow rating for the pulling vehicle. So when a caravan is sold um, under legislation, particularly in Queensland, it's a Motor Traders Association legislation, um, the dealer's not out actually allowed to sign you up for a new van until they are able to establish that the tow vehicle you have is sufficient to tow the vehicle that they're selling you. So by law, they're not allowed to sell you a van that is over the tow capacity of the vehicle you own. So um, there may be some question there that um, obviously in the years gone by, um, only things like Toyota Land Cruisers had a three and a half ton tow capacity and it made it very difficult um, for vehicles to meet the requirements of the van given their tow capacities. Um, obviously that is changing as the years go on. A lot of the modern utilities and most vehicles have at least three or three and a half ton tow rating. So um, the issue may slowly subside but it is very difficult and it is something to be very mindful of. I would suggest to all owners, um, even when you first pick up your van, take it over a weigh bridge and find out what it actually weighs. You may be very surprised that the placarded weight and the actual weight of the va uh, van vary quite significantly. And um, particularly with legislation changing, um, the law is changing quite rapidly there and you are illegal to tow the van over its placarded weight or over the placarded weight of the vehicle that's towing the van. So it's very critical that you know what you're towing and that you make sure you're within the law uh, towing that vehicle because it's the tower responsibility, not the Sarge Yard responsibility from that point on. Thanks Greg. Jason, that's a great question. Um, we had John with, I have a tourer with a Dometic roof mounted. It's very noisy. Is there a reason for this? Okay. Um, most air conditioning or most complaints around air conditioning um, do circle around the issue of noise. Unfortunately, when you shift air, it becomes noisy. Um, the fans in most air conditioning are noisy. Now, if it's excessive noise, there could be a vibration on the roof. 
Um, it could be the way the air conditioner is mounted um, that is vibrating roof panelling at, at a harmonics level. So um, it's worthwhile to have a look at it, pay some attention. Listen to others around you and see if yours is excessively noisy in comparison. Um, I do find at night particularly a lot of people complain because there's no ambient noise around outside mm. then to mask the noise of your air conditioner so you become very aware that it's overly noisy. So, um, you know, as I said, it's one of those things we get a lot of complaints about. A lot of people question is there a way to make them more silent in operation. Uh, the ultimate answer is it's very difficult to make a super quiet air conditioner that has a reasonable cooling cycle because as soon as you start moving air at speed, you get noise. Okay, thanks Craig. Um, Craig, whereabouts are the air conditioning filters located? Uh, look, they in a variety of locations. Most of the filters are on the inner handler, um, which is the section that you see inside of the caravan. They'll either be front or rear or on the side of that particular handler. If you look up your owner's manual, it should give you a very good idea of, ex of the location of those uh, replaceable and cleanable filters. Um, if you guys have lost your manuals, jump online. Um, majority of our caravan air conditioning come from Dometic. If you jump on the Dometic RV Centre's website, they have got all of the manuals there for you to um, go through and have a look at. Um, Denise, is there a way to stop the air conditioner cutting in and out? Very difficult, Denise. The air conditioning cut in and out, or what's known as cycle, um, depending on the temperature that the aircon is set at, and the ambient temperature outside. Um, once they're a fairly close match, obviously the air conditioner will stop operating just like your fridge, which obviously saves power, makes them more efficient. When a, the temperature drops or, or increases inside the van above that of the set parameter, the compressor will cut in, which is again that bang noise you'll hear on the startup, and it will run until it reaches the desired temperature again, and then cut out. So um, unfortunately it's very difficult to stop that cycling uh, of the motor with the application of an air conditioner. Okay. Um, last one from our air conditioning set next last week. Um, Shane, what sort of lifespan would you expect out of your air conditioner? Look, you should get at least 10 years out of your, your air conditioner and again it comes down to age and condition. Um, where you're located, what environmental factors the aircon is faced with externally. So if you live right down on the beach, um, your aircon will not last anywhere near the, the length of time that if you're inland. Um, and obviously the amount of use that the air conditioner uh, gets. Um, they are motor driven, so you've got wearing components with fan motors, compressors and what have you. So um, it's really down to how much use. Rule of thumb, you should get a good 10 years out of them though. Okay, so that wraps up last week's air conditioning. We're going to move on to some washing machine questions. First off, I'm going to just head away for a minute, Greg, and I'll show everybody our Kamek 2.5 kilo top loader over here. All right, so as you can see here, we do not have a very large compartment, and they can be fitted into a lot of different cupboards in your van. I'll just open this one up here. So I've got the Kamek 2.5 kilo top loader here. Predominantly, we've got two differences between a household washing machine and a caravan washing machine. This basket being one of them, it's a travel basket, so it's not to be used while you've got your cycles going, but it is to be used when you're in transit. So this helps secure your spin basket in. So this is a just like a normal, regular Dometic washing machine. Down here we've got your little filters that you can clean out and change regularly. We'll just flick it on so you can have a little look. So you've got seven different cycles on these washing machines. You've got a full cycle at 38 minutes. Flick through, you've got a quick wash for 21 minutes. You've got a wash only, 14. You've got a wash and rinse. Rinse and spin, which is really great, especially when you're at the beach and you just want to quickly rinse out some of your beach wear. You've got a spin only, and back to the start. You've also got a high and low setting, guys. So. Um, when you're saving on water when you're out back, it's a good option if you really need to do a wash load before you get back into town, it does have a low setting. So I'll open up this cupboard down here for you, so you can see underneath, 
Now these are only 64 centimetres in height. They are 42 centimetres in depth and 41 centimetres in width. So you've really, really got a compact washing machine here, guys. Um, and as I said, can fit in majority and self-installation as well. So we do get a lot in here to get fitted by our installers, but they are quite simple to use and install yourself. So close that one up. Come back over. I have how many clothes would you be able to hold? Um, a small load of clothes sheets even. It does actually. You can't look, you're not going to be able to put in a family of fours washing in there for two days, but I generally rule of thumb a day or two worth of one couple's clothing can fit in your 2.5 kilo. You can do one set of sheets, but don't put your doonas in there, guys. It's definitely not like a household washing machine, but it is great for when you're traveling. It does do a family of four for a day or a couple for two days. So I'll pass back over to Greg. We have got, um, how much water usage should I aim for with our washing machines? That'll vary on the machine you've got. Um, each machine itself varies. Obviously the top loaders use more water than the front loader uses. Um, they're more efficient. Um, you know, in comparison to other applications in your van, washing machines are a little bit of a thirsty item. Um, have a look at the manufacturer specs. I think on the Kamek 2.5 it's around about that 20 odd uh, to 30 odd litres per cycle. Yes, yeah, so I think we've got... Pretty sure it's 15 litres per cycle um, on the low setting and up to 30 litres on the high setting for the Kamek 2.5. Um, now hot water cycles, do the hot water cycles draw more power? Um, certainly, they don't draw more power out of the unit itself. Um, well, I should clarify that. Some units have an internal heater which will use your house power um, and obviously they will be drawing 240 volt um, with an electric element. Um, others use the hot water supply from your van and depending on how that's being produced, whether it be a 240 element or on gas, will be how you're using that power. So anytime you're heating water, you're using some sort of power, whether it be burning gas to heat the water or 240. So um, you're definitely using more power when you're running a hot cycle, just as you are at home. Um, I've just had Steve come through. Um, what's the best size or capacity for travelling? So I'm assuming you mean um, what size washing machine you need for travelling? Well, um, as Renee's probably just shown you, that 2.5 kilo machine is a very ideal. Um, the washing machines that are designed for caravans are usually very compact and much smaller. So your domestic machines will start at around that five kilo mark and go up to about seven and a half, eight kilos is a bigger machine. Um, in the caravan side of things, they start at a kilo and a half and run up to about three odd kilos um, being the larger end of the machine. So at 2.5, they're nice compact in size and they'll fit m most of the applications for washing that you will have while you're out on the road. Do I need anything special to run my washing machine with a 100 watt solar panel? Okay, most of the washing machines run off 240 volts, so they're not 12 volt machines. Um, so if you're wanting to run when you're free camping, you will need an inverter or a generator outside, um, obviously providing 240 volt power uh, to your van. Um, most of the machines um, on their cold water cycle, you'll probably find a thousand watt inverter will operate the machine quite comfortably. If you're running heat cycles, you're much, you'll need a much larger capacity um, inverter or uh, generator to run those. Um, and you would need to look at the specifications actually on the machine as to what sort of current draw they have. Anne's come in. She has a front loader washing machine on, on its highest spin cycle. It feels like it's going to take off. It shakes very badly. Would this be an installation problem? It could be an installation problem. It could be just a loading problem um, with your clothes. So um, no different to your machines at home. If the drum gets out of balance, the machine will vibrate quite heavily. Uh, if they're not well installed, you might find that vibration feels like the washing machine is about to leave the van. Um, so it is important to make sure the washing machine is very well secured in the first place and that you load the drum fairly evenly and make sure you don't overload the machine. I'll just show you down the bottom of this one, Anne. Um, 
just the installation points that the boys have got down here. Um, so check on the bottom on all of the corners and see if you have some secured points down. If you don't have that, that's probably a good um, indication that you may need to have it secured a bit better. Um, any other questions coming through, guys? We have got... Can you use a caravan washing machine outside of your caravan? For sure, there's no problem using your washing machine outside of your caravan. Obviously, uh, as I said earlier, it is a 240 volt appliance. So you want to be very mindful that it's in a dry location where no electrical shock is possible. Um, and what is the difference between washing machines with a plastic hose versus rubber hose? Okay, the, the main difference between the two is actually in the hosing. Obviously the rubber hoses last longer, um, they're far less prone to being kinked than the plastic hoses. So try to look for a machine that does have the rubber hoses over plastic hoses. You said you'll get a longer lifespan out of them and if the hose is to go around a corner you'll find less likely to clink than you will with your plastic hosing. Can I use regular washing detergent in my caravan washing machine? For sure. Um, there's no real problem, they are just a normal washing machine, they're just a smaller version of your domestic machine, so there's no problem using that. Um, obviously, check with your manufacturers to their preferred um, product. Some recommend products over other products to be used in their machine, particularly in the front loaders. Richard Collis has just said, do you look comfy, Greg? <laughs> so I'd have to agree, I think this is his favourite part of the week, guys. He gets to come in here and, and put his feet up for, for half an hour and have a chat with you guys. So. I think he's very comfy. Um, okay, grey water. Where can I dump my grey water, Greg? Okay. Again, another great uh, question. Um, the best way to find locations for grey water, things like your camp five, sevens, um, those books have in them, as, as well as all of the free camps and camping locations, they also give you the dump points. So a lot of councils, even very large national parks now, have dedicated dump points and they're clearly marked generally where you can drop off your grey water tank uh, once you're finished. As I said, have a look at those. Some of the um, Mudmat 3s, some of the electronic versions of those also keep that sort of information there so that you'll have a very good idea in the location that you're going to be in, where the closest point will be to, uh, to drop your tank when necessary. And on grey water, does the hot water from your washing machine damage your grey water tank? Look, it doesn't. Um, it comes out of your out of your machine either through a rubber or plastic pipe as we discussed and it doesn't affect those pipes so it won't affect your grey water tank in any way um, if you wanted to run hot cycles through it. We've had a great question from Howard. Is a top loader better than a front loader and if not what's the difference? Okay. Um, the main difference between the two is obviously the water consumption so your front loaders are far more efficient in water usage um, saying that your front loaders are far more expensive machines than your top loaders. So again, sometimes it comes down to either space and design in your van where you're going to have it located. Will you have access to be able to operate the machine through the front or will it be a drop in through a bench because it's mounted in a cupboard? Um, there are a couple of things to consider with that, but overall your front loaders are obviously far more water efficient, your top loaders, but again, you're paying at least twice to three times the price for a front loading machine. No, Steve, unfortunately, there's no coldies in the fridge behind him. We might have to organise that for next week, hey? Um, Steve, again, is it easy to install a washing machine yourself? Look, if you're handy, certainly. They're not overly difficult. They have a normal 240 volt plug on them. Um, they're installed very similarly to your machine at home, uh, other than the fixing points into the van. So you, you do have to have some handyman skills to be able to install one and some knowledge of where to screw and where not to screw. Some of the manufacturers will give you in their in installation manuals, product manuals, um, tips on where the best points to secure the machine is. Okay, and John Craig, what model is the van we're in, Greg? Uh, this is an Adamus Sapphire, so it's our base model touring van. Okay, hope that one helps. Jump onto the site, adamuscaravans.com.au. You can check them out there, John. Um, what else have we got? It's about me for questions on washing machines. What about your foot pedal washing machines, Greg? Have you ever had a go at one of those? Look, I haven't. <laughs> um, there's 
quite a few um, old school. I hear they actually work quite effectively. Um, even down to the, the bucket in the back of the vehicle, sloshing around as you're driving is still an effective means of washing your clothes. It's, it's amazing how well um, of an agitation the clothes get just sloshing around in the, in the good old bucket with a lid on it in the back of your vehicle. So they were the very early day washing machines. Obviously we've stepped up um, as we've moved right into the latter part of the 20th century to you know um, satellite systems and full almost domestic light washing machines so um, you can have those extended trips still do your washing without having to visit the local laundromat. Yeah, definitely in a lucky year at the moment aren't we? Um, and what about drying? Do you yourself use um, a clothes dryer at all? Like a um, um, one attached to the van, one of the pull out ones, or do you have a foldable retractable? Look, we have a foldable retractable clothesline that slips onto the side of the van, so when we pull up, um, it's uh, less than a minute operation to slide the clothesline into position. Um, it's a pull out version, so it expands out, and you'll hang quite a, a number of clothes on that particular item. Um, Mother Nature's still one of the best places to um, dry your clothes, get that good uh, vitamin E into them and kills all the bacteria in clothing. So I'm still a firm believer of sun drying your clothes. Okay. You're quite the expert on washing machines, but I would assume that it's your beautiful wife that does all the washing, isn't it? Um, well, we don't actually have a washing machine. Unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of having a large enough caravan to having a, have a washing machine in it. And um, I'm a modern man, so we share the duties most of the time. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, unless we've got something else coming through, guys, you're more than welcome to through the week. Pop some more questions in for Greg. Um, other than that, we're out for the day. So thanks for that one, Greg. We'll see you next week. Enjoy all. Have a safe week, and we'll see you next week. So next week we are actually talking about tow vehicles, which is a hot topic constantly in our workshop. I think we've got every four-wheel drive under the sun here, so the boys have a, um, a lot of friendly banter over which vehicle's best for what um, terrain and what they're towing. So get your questions ready. It might be a fun week next week. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye.